tiny last little detail of today's lesson I wanted to mention um, is this new term called absolute convergence. It's not that tricky. A series that would converge even if all its terms were positive is what we call absolute convergence. In other words, if the absolute value of the terms also converge, then it has absolute convergence. An example of a series that converges because of with absolute convergence is the P series. Um, whether or not a P series has alternating signs, the series will converge, so it's called absolute convergence. On the other hand, a series that only converges because its terms are alternating, a term that a series that we use the alternating series test to prove convergence, has what we call conditional convergence. Um, many of the series that converge because of the alternating series test fit this bill, like the alternating harmonic series. It's probably the most famous one, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third minus 1 fourth. This series has what's called conditional convergence, not absolute convergence. Um, you are occasionally asked, does a series have absolute convergence? And all you have to do is check and see if the alternating signs matter or not. Um, what difference does it make to you? The short answer is none, at least not yet. Uh, the longer answer um, and you get into some really cool advanced math with this stuff. Um, in a conditionally convergent series, like the alternating harmonic one that I just wrote down, you can rearrange the order of the terms and get a different sum. It's crazy. If you look at this, the alternating harmonic series, 1 minus 1 half plus 1 third um, minus 1 fourth plus 1 fifth, you might recognize this as the sum uh, of the Taylor series for ln of x. It's just in ln of x, we see this as x minus 1, and then x minus 1 squared, and then x minus 1 cubed. Well, the way for those all to equal 1 would be if that x happened to be 2, because 2 minus 1 is 1, no matter what exponent you put on it. So this whole thing is equal to the ln of 2. So the alternating harmonic series adds up to the ln of 2. Very cool. Unless you rearrange the terms, in which case it adds up to something completely different. And I will leave it to you to either try and rearrange the terms and figure out if you can recognize a different pattern. Um, I'll give you a second to pause the video and kind of think about it. Okay, so here's where the fun comes in. We've got this alternating harmonic series. one minus one half, plus one third, minus one fourth, plus one fifth, and so on. Which, by the way, I just showed you is equal to ln of two, but that doesn't matter to us quite yet. Let's just give this a name. I just want to say that this sum, I, I'm going to call it x, just for the moment. It equals some sum. We know it's ln of two, but let's just call it x to keep it simple. If I were to take that sum and multiply it by two, it would, of course, give me two x. And, of course, I could also just distribute that two to all of these terms. I'm just multiplying everything here by 2. 2 minus 2 over 2 plus 2 over 3 minus 2 over 4. I'm just distributing a 2. But what happens when I do that is a lot of these terms can reduce. So let's kind of rewrite that reduced. Um, 2 minus 1. 2 thirds I can't really reduce. 1 half I can. Uh, 2 fifths I can't. Sorry, the next one I probably should have included here. Go back and add one more term here plus one-sixth is useful for me. When I double it, that would have been equal to two-sixths. Sorry, correction, that would be a minus sign, not plus sign. And when I reduce that, it's minus one-third, and so on. I can keep going like this. you think it would equal to two ln of two, right? We'll see about that. Well, what I want you to notice in this sum is there's a lot of terms that share a denominator. You can kind of think of them like like terms. We can kind of collect them and put them together. Like 2 minus 1 we can combine. And then uh, 2 thirds minus 1 third we can combine, etc. So let's do that. Let's do some collecting here. Remember, this is still just 2x. 2 times my sum. Well, 2 minus 1 is 1. What I'm going to do is I'm going to slightly rearrange my order here. 
You'll see why very clearly in just a second. I'm going to save that two-thirds for just a moment. I'm going to skip over that term for just a second. I'm going to jump to the next term and put that next, minus one-half. And then in my next terms, what I can do is collect the positive two-thirds minus one-third. Well, two-thirds minus one-third is just one-third. And I think you can start to see what's happening here. The same thing is going to happen for my fifths. If I, um, there's going to be a one-fifth later on. When I subtract those, that'll be positive one-fifth. And then the minus two-eighths, which I didn't bother writing down, but if I were to keep going, it would show up there also. And wait a second, 2x is equal to 1 minus 1 half plus a third minus a fourth plus a fifth. But wait a second, didn't we just say that was equal to x? So when I doubled the alternating harmonic series, I once again got to the alternating harmonic series. So 2x equals x. Obviously, there's something wrong here. And it takes much more advanced math to figure out exactly what's wrong here. Um, I'll give you a hint. It's called the Riemann's summation theorem. Riemann's, th Riemann's, series th Riemann's series theorem, I think is what it's called. That doesn't matter to us. What matters to us is the fact that this only happens in conditionally convergent series. This would never happen in an absolutely convergent series. And this is sort of a long way of saying there's a difference between the two. We don't really need to care about it quite yet. When you take some college math, you might come across it again. Something to look forward to.